all. Planning Committee. Um, first of all, sign the minutes of the previous meeting. Is it your wish I do sign them? Three. Three. Okay. Thank you. How do you stamp this? Councillors, Steele Owen Swift, Michael Longley, Richard Auger, David Gaines, and Richard Cox. Right, I think that's it. End of interests, uh, disposable interests. Councillor? Uh, 0513, because um, I live adjacent to that property, so I'll, I'd like to leave the room on that. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Don't forget you can do so at the time. <coughs> Party whipping arrangements. <coughs> yeah, Members of the public, that means we don't get together on polit as political people and decide how we're going to vote beforehand. Um, that's not done. Um, there is an application that's been delegated, um, which is the application in Dumptree. Um, it's a delegated approval. The parish councils or the town council's comments rely to the first application that was given approval to. So they won't, they're not proper considerations of this application, so it's a delegated approval. Right, a few bits of housekeeping to tell you. The alarm bell rings, please go through the main doors that you came in and out as quietly and quickly as you can. Please switch your mobile devices to silent if they go off. Depending on what sort of noise it makes, it's five to ten pounds to the chairman's charity. And we collect it as well. So if you want to pay money, switch, leave your phone on. Um, the proceedings are being recorded. Speakers will have three minutes and you'll hear a tone and then be asked to wind up, please. And that's the only opportunity the public do have to speak, so Please don't interrupt, I'm sure you won't. And if you're, you don't look like a, a group that will clap this, cheer, boo, and stand up and wave your arms. But we do get it sometimes. And then during the time that you're talking, you'll perhaps see people talking up here, which looks awfully bad manners. They're trying to get an answer to the points that you're making so you don't have to wait for an afterwards. Um, you're receiving members the update on, on performance. You're getting that by email from, from Maria. So. Next, we start off with, them with the very first money application, which is in Badby, and it's 1179. Over to you, officers. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the location plan shows they do the property. Uh, it's just on the edge of the Badby designated conservation area. Um, the site is judged to be within the confines of the village uh, and the primary issues really in respect to the site is uh, highway considerations. Um, an appeal was determined back in 1987 which was dismissed primarily on the grounds of highway concerns. Uh, no further applications have been received since that time. The current application has been the subject, as you'll see in the report, of considerable discussions with the, the highway authority such that uh, their objections or concerns have been dealt with in terms of traffic surveys and visibility displays. Uh, I'll refer members to the late representations uh, in respect of additional recommended conditions. Otherwise, Chair, we just the proposal to be acceptable planning terms and accordingly recommend the application to approve. Thank you, Ian. We have one speaker, Mr. Coy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the planning committee. May we first commend your officers, Bob Ham and Michael Venton, for working with ourselves and their thoughts on the report in bringing this application before you tonight with a recommendation of approval. It has been a positive experience in working together to address the issues of concern or requiring further detailed information. As alluded to in your officers' report, we commenced this project with a pre-application inquiry in August 2017 after reviewing the previous planning history of the site, which concluded with an appeal decision back in June, I thought it was 1998, but Eamon refers to 1987. Nevertheless, some 30 years ago, however, it is worth noting that the inspector accepted the principle of it running on the site, with his main concern being one of access, um, as Eamon has mentioned. This application, submitted in November 2017, follows a supportive pre-application inquiry process, which included a site meeting and a written response 
which broadly reflected the inspector's concerns with regard to access and impact upon the trees. The application responds comprehensively to the issues raised during the pre-application process and during the course of the application itself and in cooperation with officers both on site and through written dialogue, amended drawings, reports and additional information as requested. With regard to highways, to some extent we have needed, along with officers, to react to the emerging concerns of the Highways Authority and during the course of the application process. This culminated in an extensive location survey being carried out and a detailed report being provided by an independent highways consultant, resulting in our access proposals now being accepted by the Highway Authority. In conclusion, Mr Chairman, considerable care has also been applied to all other areas of concern as detailed in your officer's report, which you will be pleased to know I don't intend to repeat here, as we consider along with officers that the site can now be carefully developed and its implementation safeguarded by compliance with the amended plans, reports and planning conditions proposed by officers, all of which are acceptable to the applicant, should you be minded to accept the officer's advice that the application be approved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Coy. Local member, Councillor Smith. <coughs> Is it your ward to be in? No? No, it's not. So we don't have a local member for Bambi here, do we? No? Okay. So, committee, your comments? No. <coughs> Councillor. If I could start, I, I don't see anything wrong with this at all, and I would propose that we accept the officer's advice. Second that, yeah. Okay, do you wish to say anything second that? <coughs> Not really, it's pretty non-contentious really, isn't it, by the by the by the okay. Councillor Ritchie. Um my question I, I you know I've read a couple of things that the highways say about the you know the narrow road. Um adding another house onto it, I can't imagine um makes the situation any worse. My only, my only question on this is that, you know, it is a big house. I <coughs> see that the, that the parish council has a view that what Bantby needs is houses of one, two, three bedrooms, this is four bedrooms. Um, I understand that the Bantby plan has not yet been approved. Is there any notice, however, that we can that we can take of it in, in discussing an application now. Um, well, I, I think the way, the way that we attach to that is, is, is extremely limited, and I think the report all, also considers the, the, the comments of the parish council. <coughs> no, you know, a single dwelling is well below our normal threshold for pursuing affordable housing. It, 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 just remember, but I mean, I mean, the issue is not affordable houses. The, 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 the issue is the size of the houses that yeah, are well, needed. The, the simple answer to that, Chairman, is there's insufficient grounds for refusing a, a three bedroom, a four bedroom house compared to a three bedroom house. <coughs> Simply wouldn't be, given that all the factors are, are just to be acceptable on planning grounds. Okay. I mean, you'll note from the, uh, the report that we are recommending conditions on further extensions, etc. So any further extensions or alterations to the dwelling would come under, uh, become control of the local plan authority, assuming the applicant doesn't appeal against those conditions. Uh, and that would mean that any future extensions or alterations to the property would be a matter for consideration under the planning applications uh, at those times. Okay, good. Yes, uh, we are recommending the, uh, the conditions, aren't we? And the amended conditions. That's, that's the yeah, the conditions are part of it. Including the amended ones, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, but as I introduced, I drew members' attention to the lake representations yeah. and the conditions uh, as advised by the planning officers. Thank you. So, right. like those lake representations? So, yes. Right, I've got a proposal. The application should be approved and seconded. All those in favour, please show. The application yes. unanimous and it's approved. <coughs> Next up, the <coughs> application even is in Long Buckley and. 0312. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is an application to convert uh, what I said it's essentially uh, an existing uh, ancillary art building uh, by way of a further extension to create a self contained residential annex uh, which will be used in connection with the main dwelling 
Uh, again, in planning grounds, we'll seek from the report to set out our considerations on the planning merits of the proposal uh, and judge it to be acceptable on planning grounds and therefore recommend the application to the Brilliant Chairman. Thank you, Aaron. We have a few speakers. Um, <coughs> the first speaker is in here, so the reserve is Mrs. Hazen. Do you have three minutes? <coughs> Don't worry, it's Sorry, I thought the parish speaking. council would be going first. <laughs> um, yes, I'm here to speak on behalf of my friends here. Um, we'd first like to point out that the officer's report contains some factual inaccuracies which have been shown on the submitted photographs. There's no mature hedge screen in the garden to number five, and there has been no extension to the outbuilding servicing that property. <coughs> so no precedent for development has been set. The so-called tall hedge bordering numbers nine and eleven is less than five feet tall, so it will not hide the proposed self-contained building, which we consider will not be visually attractive, nor add to the overall quality of the area, but be rather intrusive on the garden spaces of number seven and nine. It is also difficult to see how the proposed structure could be built without affecting the aforementioned hedge. Finally, the development will be 11 metres from the shared pathway, not be 11 metres from the shared pathway, but five metres. As highlighted by the Parish Council, there are already parking issues in this area of the village. Whilst we can see that increasing from four to five bedrooms does not necessitate additional parking provision under NCC adopted standards, the fact is the existing property under those same guidelines only has parking provision for a three, not a four bedroom property, so it does not currently meet the parking standards. The local plan lists several criteria for new developments, of which we would like to highlight two. First, the development should create a place that is safe. The proposal has one means of access egress, and the layout causes some concern as to how an occupant would escape in the event of an emergency, such as fire. Secondly, the space should promote health and well-being. Whilst acknowledging that there are no national or local guidelines for minimum living space, we consider the proposal would result in poor quality accommodation with substandard light and outlook. There is one window through which the outside world can only be viewed from the kitchen sink. This surely cannot be conducive to mental well-being. The report states there is a functional relationship between the existing property and the proposed development. We fail to understand what is meant by that, as the report also states, the annex would not lend itself to becoming a separate unit of accommodation in its own right due to the close proximity of the host dwelling and relationship with it. We fail to see how a building with sleeping, living, kitchen and bathroom facilities is not a separate unit of accommodation, and therefore what relationship it has to the main dwelling. We do not believe that the plans nor the officer's report adequately describe the proposal and would request that before any decision is made which might concur with the officer's recommendation, that the committee or part of them visit the site of the proposal to make an informed judgment. We thank you for your time. Thank you. And the next speaker is Mr. Spokes from the Parish Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jeff Spokes, Vice Chairman of the Parish Council. My council have asked me to speak against this application as we believe this to be an undesirable background development. Over a year ago, this property was a three-bedroom end of terraced house. Permission was given to make it into a four-bedroom house with a two-story <coughs> extension. At the time, we had misgivings about this. <coughs> Nevertheless, it passed. This, ex this extension caused many issues with building control complaints and the party wall act not being notified. All of this, of course, impacted on the neighbours along with block sewage issues and low water pressure, etc. We now have another plan to turn the garden shed into a living accommodation. This shed, along with many of its type in the village, were used by our past shoemakers working from home in small sheds. At the rear of the main building, most of them having a rear path on the use of the rest of the terrace. We are told this is for an elderly relative. I personally would not wish to put any relative in my garden shed. One window, one door, what an outcome. How many more applications are likely to follow? If so, it will prove difficult to turn them down. All our garden shed full of relatives. When this relative moves on, what happens next? Try to sell it off? We're told this will have a condition placed on it. For all of my 30 years on the council, I've seen many of these conditions removed. County Highways raised the question of parking. This is a major problem in the centre area of the village. 
any extra cars will have to be parked on the street at the Market Square and the Market Car Park at <coughs> four at night. A previous application for conversion of buildings was refused in 1991. What next? An application for a six or seven bedroom dead of terraced house? In closing, my council would say this is an undesirable background development, major issue for the party, and a complete overdevelopment of the site with the possibility of a separate residence. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Stokes. Um, next speaker is Mrs. Waldron, who's the applicant. I'm afraid I won't speak so eloquently. Um, I'm just the head of the house. I'm looking to explain what I'm looking to do. Um, I am looking to extend that, that building in order to accommodate my father who's returning from Greece. Um, he doesn't actually drive, so there won't be any parking issues, certainly whilst he's alive, although he has to explain he will die at some point. Um, I do have a uh, park for three vehicles uh, there. I have the, the additional parking that you will see, the blocked park parking. And there is also parking outside the property that is very rarely uh, used in its full entirety in the parking space there for these two cars, um, but that doesn't get used very often, so there, there to me seems adequate parking um, within the locality. Um, I guess from my perspective, I had looked at uh, all the additional buildings, and you'll see from the photograph I sent in, the size of the extension to the building at number three, um, which is significantly bigger than the extension I am proposing. It's exactly the same. Uh, it's the other end of the building to where I am looking to, to extend. I did send a photograph in showing the size of the two extensions. Um, I had, had believed the precedence had to set in terms of extending that building. Um, and so I would like that photograph to be shown if possible because it does show how big the extension to number three is in comparison to what I am asking for. Um, and in terms of, I, I, I don't wish to disturb my neighbours, mine is the first property we could get to along the park where it is shared, um, so I don't see there being any huge disturbance to my neighbours. Um, and similarly, I don't believe that the extensions that have taken place at number three um, are any less significant than the ones I'm looking for. <coughs> and therefore, I don't see that the argument in terms of the, the uh, hedging is, is any different to, to the extension at number three. Um, and that's really my, my, my case. Uh, it's not a good thing to my colleagues, but uh, that's my um, case. Okay. So thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> um, well, I'm a local member. The other local member is not here tonight, so I'm afraid I'm going to be speaking as, as a local member. Um, I'm afraid I don't support the application. Um, this is an end has been said, an end of terraced house. There are probably, in Long Buckby and other villages, but in Long Buckby, there are about 100 examples of terraced houses. And they were mainly used for shoemakers. Um, the oak buildings at the top of their gardens, at the back of their gardens, were called shoemakers' shops. Now, they weren't shops like we know them nowadays. They were workshops. In fact, I started off my business in 1960-something in one in East Street in Swan Terrace. So I, I actually got permission to use one. So I used one for my television <coughs> repairs back in those days. So there, there is about a hundred. Now, to my mind, terrace property in villages and in towns is what I call the starter homes of the village. They are the affordable houses that people come to to start up in life. Um, I'm out to say that this was a starter home. Okay, it's been converted, it's been extended. A year ago it was a three bedroom one and now it's a four bedroom house and now he wants to build another extension in the garden. I consider that the development is too large for the site. It's an overdevelopment of the site, most definitely. And I have to say, with respect to you um, as an applicant, that when I was coming up in the world of, of housing, if you wanted a bigger house, you, you moved to a bigger house. You didn't just make a starter home um, gigantic and spread all over the garden. I'm sorry, I don't mean that personally, but it's just a comment I, um, <coughs> I made. So, as you guess from my comments as a local member, I don't support the application. I support the parish um, views um, of, of both speakers. And I would like to propose that the application is refused 
um, <coughs> on the fact that it is too large, it's an overdevelopment <coughs> of, of the site, and it is undesirable backland development. I accept that there, nowadays you can put, you can <coughs> make the outbuilding into a bedroom without planning permission. Okay, if they want to make the bedroom into into a bedroom without planning permission, it can be done, but not not to this stage, not uh, not to this size. So that's my proposal that the application be refused. Do I have a second? Yes, Chairman. Oh, thank you, Council Chancellor. <laughs> do you wish to say anything? Yes, I do, Chairman. Um, I uh, have studied this. Uh, application very carefully and driven past the site. I haven't been onto the site, of course. Um, I did notice, incidentally, Chairman, that there were some inconsistencies on the application form. The application form ticks the yes box where it says, Can it be seen from the public land? But the officer's report says it can't be seen from public area, so um, that sort of doesn't balance <coughs> out. Um, but I, I agree with the view that you've just expressed that it's overdevelopment of the site. And it, it, it seems to be against uh, some uh, indications of the new NPDF, <coughs> which was published a couple of weeks ago. Paragraph 127 lists six criteria. Uh, one ensures that all developments are visually attractive as a result of good architecture layout and appropriate and effective landscaping. I don't see evidence of that in this particular application, Chairman. Another worry <coughs> that I have is that the extension is larger than the original building, uh, which is unusual, uh, not illegal, of course, but it, it's, it supports, in my view, my, my suggestion that it's overdevelopment. The original building is described as 10 square metres. The extension is described as 13.7 square metres, which suggests, of course, that it's larger. Um, yeah, you, you, you can't actually see the, the, the bit that we're looking for if you, if you go to and drive past the site carefully. Uh, you can see the buildings that are, of adjacent properties. Um, so I think it's overdeveloped <coughs> of the site, Chairman. I think it reduces to a minimal, if not zero amount, any associated amenity space. Uh, and uh, I, therefore, am happy to second your proposal that it be refused on the grounds of overdevelopment and unsuitable according to some of the indication, the criteria in the MPPF. Thank you, Councillor Chapman. Any more speakers, please? Yeah. Councillor Adam, and then... Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't agree with you. Sorry? Which is unusual. Um, I've been on the website, and I've gone on Google and everything, had a look. Um, yes, it does say that um, it could be, be converted to additional bedroom without filing a planning application. This is going a little bit further make it a bit bigger, but am I right in thinking that part of that building is there now and they're just bringing it out a little bit, not so it's not a completely new building, it, it's, it, it's, it, a, it's only a, a straight line. It's a brick built yet, uh, there at the moment. <laughs> yeah, part, the part That's at existing. the back is there now, they're changing the shape of the roof and they're bringing it out a little way. Yes. Um, I understand the lady wants it for a farm, so it means that he can live independently, but he's got family there if they need him. And that, in my account, goes a long way. The, the, the officers have put it up for approval, and I can't see anything wrong with it, and I'd like to, um, if I can, propose that we have set up his advice. We've got a proposal the other way, so yes, you'll have, you yeah. you have to vote yes. Can yeah. Richie first? No. Yes, I, I'm, I, I, I'm never very comfortable when arguments are made in terms of the needs of the particular occupants, because you know, once that building is converted, it is going to be converted until such time as they decide to move the whole area down. Um, 
but my slight concern too is well, how much further does you know does this application go than would be allowed as a permitted development? Let me put that the other way around. What could be done here as a permitted development? Where is you know where, where is the extra that makes it that makes it um, that might make it unacceptable? <coughs> Uh, I'm going to yeah. <coughs> so can, can you explain with the difference between permitted development and, and well, development, <coughs> development to be carried out without the implying permission? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, if you permit me to finish, within no. the cartilage of a dwelling, um, you can erect like buildings uh, or alter like like buildings without the need for planning permission. Uh, provided they're used for incident purposes incidental to the, uh, uh, the, the main dwelling. Uh, so in theory, this uh, building, if it's judged to be within the cartilage of the dwelling, could be altered uh, or extended uh, without need for planning permission. Uh, the reason it requires permission is probably it exceeds those criteria set out in the, uh, the, the general development order and the fact that it's self-contained. Uh, I think as the report indicates, there would be nothing to stop somebody moving into that building as it currently exists and using it as a summer room, for example, or even as a bedroom. Uh, on that basis, it would be incidental to the dwelling house in that all amenities in terms of kitchen, toilet facilities, etc. would have to be used for the main, the main dwelling. Um, so you have two issues here. One is the physical development in terms of the physical extension of the building. Is that unacceptable on planning grounds? And then the other issue, which I think is the issue that seems to be concerning most people, is the fact that it's self-contained and how to uh, restrict that at some point in the future. Uh, it's not uncommon for us as, as planning officers in doing planning applications that we allow for uh, granny flats, as they're called, or uh, annexes, uh, self-contained or, or not, uh, in association with the main dwelling. You have to judge the application as it is before you. You cannot predict what may happen in the future. Uh, and on that basis, officers are satisfied that in terms of the physical extension, that it's acceptable in terms of its impact on the surrounding properties. Uh, and in terms of its use as a self-contained uh, unit, being ancillary or associated with the neighborhood, it is acceptable and a condition can be imposed to, to uh, secure that. Um, so, on the face of it, at uh, this time, we judge the proposal to be acceptable. There is, uh, the, the speaker has pointed to uh, uh, an inaccuracy in the, the drawing. Uh, I just scaled it off. The extension would be five metres from the footpath, as opposed to um, 11 metres quoted in the, uh, in the report. Uh, that footpath, as I understand, is a shared access, shared by the other occupants of other dwellings. So it's a, it's a right of way, as it were, yeah. for people to cross along the back of the existing properties to access their own properties, etc. Uh, and the proposal doesn't impinge or intrude upon that. But it's for members to decide, and clearly uh, members will decide on its planning merits, and you're entitled to come to an alternative view. But, but let me put my question this way. How much smaller would it need to be to be a permitted development? Well, that's, you know, I mean, if you're talking within the, the boundary, you go up to two and a half metres if it's within a metre of, of the boundary. If it's a dual pitch roof, it's up to four metres, and again, it has to be further from, from, the, from the boundary. We're, we're not here to decide what, you know, what can cannot be done uh, under the development rights. You're here to determine the applications before yeah. you determine. That, 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 that's true, sir, but in terms, in terms of... Um, I find in terms of taking a view as to whether you know, this is an application that should be accepted or not, um, I think it's been relevant the extent to which it goes beyond what is permitted. I don't think there's much point in, in discussing sort of academically what they could or they couldn't do. The application that was before members is this application, and that's what you must, must judge. It's true that they could use the existing property, uh, as they have already 
uh, for the purposes of the, the, the adjournment of the ordinance. We could extend with a flat roof extension coming forward, uh, which would be below two and a half metres in height. Potentially, that would not require permission. Um, we could put a pitch roof on it, provided it was lower than the, that set out in the general community development order, probably wouldn't require planning permission. But this, this is an academic discussion about what they could or may or may not choose to do. <coughs> they have chosen to submit a planning application, which is for you tonight, and judge that application on its merits. Okay. Any more points? If not, I'll move to Councillor Wesley. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think I'm in agreement with uh, Councillor Adam on this one. Um, I think uh, quite a lot of uh, possible, maybe slightly irrelevant and over-exaggerated uh, over uh, discussions around this. Um, I don't really see it as over-development um, with, the, with the shed, call it the shed there already, and the possibility that other things can be done to it. Possibly my main concerns are the, are the car parking, but um, nobody else seems to be overly worried about that, particularly the local member. Um, so um, I'd have to say that uh, if it comes to it, I will second a second proposal from Councillor Eden. Well, there is no proposal. I said <coughs> if it comes to it, I will second a yeah. proposal. Any more comments? Yes. Can we please see the extension at number three, which is comparable or in fact larger than one that's being proposed? Yes, I would appreciate it if you would do it again for me. I'm sorry, you're not allowed I know, to sorry, I was asked. I'm sorry, but you can't speak either. Oh, I think, with, again, with respect, Chairman, I mean, reference to other, other buildings and other permissions is, is uh, to some extent, mm -hmm. you don't have the benefit of those before you. You judge the applications before you, which is this extension. Um, other inspectors will often quote. They often quoted other cases, but what they'll normally say is, I do not have the full details before me. I must judge this application on its merits. And that's what I'd be suggesting to you. You judge what's before you. Thank you. I'll, I must say one more thing in um, that there is a row about buildings there. And those out buildings can be used for any purpose, can't they? Um, you can drill things, you can saw things, you can do anything. And one of them is going to be right next to this um, place for this elderly person as well. And there's, you are putting a residential right next to somewhere where somebody can be active in their workshop next door as well, which is right next door. I'm anyway, sorry, John, any? I think you're surmising there. Um, I'm not surmising. These, that's what they are used for, those outbuildings. Councillor. Chairman, I was. Just wondering, I mean, I know that uh, both yourself and the seconder have had the benefit of actually seeing <coughs> the site themselves. I haven't, and I know the area very well. I'm having difficulty with what's been presented to me this evening in, in making any, coming to any conclusion, because it all the, seems a bit sort of disjointed. And I wonder if it would help if we actually went to have a look at it. It's up to, it's up to you, the committee. If, if you believe that you come to a better conclusion or a, a proper conclusion by going to look at it, um, I, I don't have a problem with that. It's up to you. Well, it's, it's just a suggestion, Chair. I don't um, you know, know what my colleagues feel about it. Through you, Chairman, um, I'd like to make a recommendation for a site visit without giving a valid planning reason. And I'd thank you for possibly dealing with the first one. Uh, obviously up to members um, you have to decide what you are going there to see I just wanted to say that if that suggestion uh, were to become a proposal I'd be very happy to second that because I severely feel 
uneasy about taking a view one way or another. Um, well, we've got we've got a proposal already, so we should deal with that, though, shouldn't we? Um, yes, I mean you, you would have to move uh, an amendment to that proposal um, that it be deferred pending a site visit. <coughs> or withdrawn. I'm not proposing to propose an amendment at, at this stage, quite honestly. I, I think uh, we, if we're going to do it, we should vote on what, what, what the proposal is. And okay. Right, well, we have a proposal the application be refused for given reasons. All those in favour, please show. Two, three, four, five, six. Those against? The application is refused for the given reasons. I abstain on the grounds uh, of Sorry, yeah, I didn't know the abstention. The abstention? The uh, one. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Next application is Stone Eye Church, which is 0386. Concentrates on this journey 
which seek consent for a contemporary country house of exceptional design, concept and quality, led heavily by the landscape, the media, and wider context. You will have read <coughs> that to bring an application of this merit is an exhaustive process and not one to be taken lightly, and should therefore bring confidence <coughs> that what before you this evening can be relied upon to deliver in accordance with the criteria set out in the MPPF. We are heartened by the representations made by neighbours and their comments. We consider these entirely appropriate areas of concern, <coughs> which share our vision for the merits of such a proposal to bring out considerable enhancements within their locality. These enhancements can be truly enjoyed by all the knowledge that this proposal has been subjected to significant scrutiny and justification in order to take up against unwarranted and harmful development. Important concerns such as impact on residential communities, ecology, access, archaeology and heritage have all been carefully assessed through both consultants' reports and provided on behalf of the applicant. The report, report has been fully scrutinised by those representing the Council who provide responses, advice and recommendations. In conclusion, Mr Chairman, considerable and outstanding scrutiny has been applied to all the areas of concern as required to meet the challenges of paragraph 79 as detailed in the officer's report. We consider along with the officers that the site has been successfully developed and its implementation safeguarded by compliance with the plans, reports and planning conditions proposed by the officers. All of which are acceptable to the applicant should you be minded to accept the officer's recommendations that the application be approved. Thank you for your time. I would please start further questions. And, and just to add comment to the previous speaker, to the best of our knowledge and um, what we've been told by the applicant is that they do have an unconditional right of way over that driveway. <clears throat> so it's a bit difficult to dispute that. Just, just the chairman, I mean, the, it's, it's well known in planning that the Grand <coughs> Plan Commission doesn't overcome any covenants or rights of way, etc. So, um, with respect, it's, it's not relevant to your consideration of the application of the planning merits. If there is a right of way which may be challenged under civil law, etc., that's an entirely separate matter between the applicants and the um, no, right, so you're all sure of that. Um, even though that may be so, what the um, person is saying, you can still give planning permission or not give planning permission, as the case may be. Right, local member, that is Councillor Smith this time. Thank you, and thank you, Amy, for, for clarifying the detail on the access, because that is uh, one concern for the Parish Council. Um, Paragraph 55, 79 is always exciting, and I think this, this one certainly is. Um, broadly, I think it's, it's very interesting and in I, I support it. Um, I, my concerns are with the access has been discussed. Uh, if it's coming in off, off Main Street, then that, that's, you know, well, that's not what's before us anyway. Um, but broadly, I'm in support of this. Uh, however, I'm still open-minded and uh, would like to hear what the members' thoughts are. Thank you. All right. That's the Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I've studied this application carefully because it has an interesting history. Um, and I agree that the question of accessibility over the land is not relevant to our decision. Um, I think I have to learn the new language. Uh, Eamon's quite right. It's a paragraph 79 now, I'm not 50, but I think it meets those criteria quite clearly. Um, I've always had a great deal of respect for the opinions expressed by the open panel because we've had lots of dealings with them in the past, and I've met some people who worked through that. And so I have no hesitation, Chairman, actually, in recommending that we agree with officers' advice and approve the application. Thank you, Councillor Chalmers. Do you have a second that? Councillor Evans? Thank you, Chairman. No, I don't want to say anything. I agree with what's in the report, and I agree with Councillor... What's his name? John Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alan. <laughs> Can you um, answer me? <laughs> um, right, any other comments? If not, we'll move straight to the vote. Um, you are voting on uh, <coughs> the application bit, <coughs> excuse me, being approved, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. The application is approved. is in Brixworth.